Hi everyone, this is Laura Hammock from the Marble Jar channel, and in today's video I will share how I use Notability to create all kinds of diagrams and floor plans on my iPad. So Notability is my go-to app for handwritten notes or really anything that can't be put into a spreadsheet or typed out. So that means that it is the tool that I use for images. I have a basic tutorial video for Notability and one on how to use Notability for mind maps. But in this video, I wanna show you how easy it is to create other kinds of diagrams and floor plans in Notability. So I find it easy to sketch out diagrams or images that I'm going to use in a presentation in Notability before finalizing the design. So that way I can make tweaks before committing a lot of time and resources to a final product. The nice thing is that Notability provides some tools to make your drawings easier and better without a lot of extra effort. So let's go through them. Auto shape. First of all, Notability has a feature called auto shape that changes your approximation of a square, circle, or other basic shape into an actual shape with straight lines and smoothed out curves. All you need to do is hold for a second and it automatically changes your shape. It also creates straight lines out of your wobbly ones. I can't tell you how helpful this is. Next, edit shape. Because this is a vector-based drawing program, you can select your shape and make edits to it. You can change the dimensions by pulling the little handles, or you can do any of these commands that pop up in the menu. Duplicate makes a copy. Cut allows you to paste the shape somewhere else. Copy saves the shape to your clipboard so that you can paste it elsewhere, and delete is self-explanatory. But let's talk about the two other options. Style. If you select style, you can change the line color and thickness. In addition, you can hit the fill tab and choose to fill your shape with color. You can also change whether the line is dotted or unbroken. Save sticker. If you select save, save, Notability will save your shape as a sticker. So this means you can add it to any document that you create by hitting this plus sign up here and choosing stickers. This comes in really handy if you make the same kinds of diagram over and over again. The other really nice feature is the snap to line. So basically, when you move your shape around, you get these red lines, which help to orient your shape with other objects in your document. So if you're trying to create a diagram with a bunch of triangles, for example, in a straight line, this comes in really handy. Grid. You can also change the paper to grid or lined paper to help ensure your diagram is orthogonal and your shapes are spaced correctly. To do this, hit the three dots for more options, then paper, then choose lines, grid, or dots, and choose a size. Rotate and move. You can always go back to a shape and reselect it. Sliding it around with one finger will move it around your page, but if you use two fingers, you can rotate it. Just a warning that it is hard not to also change the size of a shape when you are rotating. And finally, you can add text to your diagrams with text boxes. For whatever reason, I find this feature to be a little clumsy, but it does help to make your diagrams more polished if you use text rather than handwriting. Select the text tool and then press down anywhere on the page to create a text box. Generally, Notability will remember the style of text that you used the last time, so once you change the font and size, you should be able to use those selections for subsequent text boxes. So those are all of the tools. So what kinds of diagrams can you produce? I'm a therapist, so I use it to create genograms, which are kind of like a fancy family tree. I would suggest creating stickers for the basic shapes so that you can standardize. Once you add a shape to your document, you can simply duplicate it and move it to where you need it. Another diagram that therapists produce is an ecomap or an ecogram. So this, um, this can show all of the systems that the clients are connected to, like school, healthcare, uh, family, church, etc. This is also easy to produce using Notability. In addition to standard diagrams, I think visualizations are sometimes easier to understand than words, so I use Notability to draw the window of tolerance, the hand model of the brain, the relationship between thoughts, emotions, and behaviors, and other concepts. A picture is sometimes worth a thousand words, and Notability makes it really easy to create quick, professional-looking images. Finally, I use Notability a lot for floor plans. We just finished a basement project, which I drew up in Notability. I've also designed bathrooms, sheds, all kinds of projects. So this helps me communicate with my contractor with a minimum of back and forth. 
For this, I would highly recommend using the grid paper in Notability to show measurements. Sometimes the line snapping can be annoying here when you're trying to make very fine-tuned adjustments to the lengths of walls or the size of door openings. So I really wish Notability would give you the, fe the ability to turn that feature off temporarily. Fortunately, Notability has the um, ability to either delete an entire line or delete a portion of the line by pressing up here. So Notability is not expressly built for this purpose of drawing up floor plans, so it doesn't tell you the precise line measurements, but it feels very much like drawing things up on graph paper. And frankly, I'd much rather do it this way than have to waste time learning a new design program that's going to be inflexible in so many other ways. The other thing I find really useful is to be able to visually rearrange furniture in a room without having to physically rearrange things. I create the dimensions of the room using grid paper, and then I create shapes that show the dimensions of the furniture. Then I can use two fingers to rotate the furniture shapes into different spots in the room so I can see how that might change the function or feel of the room. Because using two fingers sometimes messes with the dimensions of the shape, I solve this issue by copying the shape and then pasting it in as an image then I can use two fingers to rotate it without changing the dimensions as easily. Let me know what you think. Comments are always appreciated, and thanks for watching.